I guess it, it kind of speaks to this idea that people say, you know, oh, there's a problem. And then the government says, or people expect the government to fix that problem for them. Um, I think the gun violence is another one of those, those things. People expect the government to always have a solution to fix their problems, and they're not willing to try to fix those problems themselves. Um, there is no government solution to these things. You have to do something for yourself. If you're unable to, unable and unwilling to do something for yourself, nothing will ever get better. Um, and that's All right, guys, for today's video, I want to talk about something uh, that's really recent, and I want to talk about it now while it's fresh in my mind. So this uh, truck format might not be the best format, but I want to talk about it while I'm thinking about it. And it, it seems like often there are weeks and multiple days in a row that uh, seem to have a theme uh, at work. There might be a reason for that. There might not be. But this week, it was like the theme of the week for me. The biggest problem that I dealt with um, multiple, on multiple occasions this week was parents who wanted, who were asking me to take their children away, and their reaction to me when I when I told them no, and it, it kind of speaks to some of the overall problems that we have in our society right now, and I think that the uh, the major underlying issue that we have when it comes to this is taking care of your own responsibilities and it's not just taking care of the responsibility that you have you know in your children that you have to care for your own children but also um, you have to be responsible for yourself and for your own actions and sometimes you have to admit that maybe you're the problem and when I tell you what when you suggest to somebody who has an issue that called the police to fix their problem that maybe they are the problem, those people get really, really mad at you. Um, and I had two very specific cases like that this week where it was funny, I, you know, when you're dealing with the same things over and over again, you tend to fall back on whatever you did last time that you dealt with this problem. So this week I had, you know, the two parents that didn't want to take care of their kids, wanted me to take their kids away, said their kids were out of control. And, um, I, with both of them, went through like all of the things that you go through with parents when you're asking what they have done to rectify the problem, what they have done to get help, uh, what they have done to uh, change their child's behavior. And in both cases, it seemed like the parent was a little bit out of line. And I think the, the line that I used is hey, listen, when you're doing everything that you can to change someone else's behavior and you're unsuccessful at that, maybe it's time that you change your own behavior and that might have a greater impact on the situation. Uh, that is, I'm almost certain that is how I framed it both times. And uh, the most recent time that I said that to someone, it was this guy and it was like out of a quasi, it was like a domestic dispute situation. He was an angry, he was an angry little elf, um, angry controlling person. And when I said, you know, maybe, maybe you should consider changing your own behaviors because maybe if you change the way you interact in this situation, it might improve it. And he might listen to you better talking about this guy's child. And, uh, he looked at me and he goes, he goes, I don't like your fucking attitude. You can get off my fucking property. And you know, then you can imagine how well the conversation went from there. But, uh, see that, that particular guy, it was interesting. Um, trying to think of the best way to cover it without diverging divulging too much information it, it that one's a really difficult one but basically this guy um doesn't have custody of his kid his kid was just in town visiting and dad was one of those people it's like when he's in my house he's gonna follow my rules and you know blah 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 and basically the kid wasn't doing anything wrong but dad had set up some very 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 strict parameters on this kid who was almost an adult and um, just, they were unrealistic, unrealistic expectations. And he wanted me to arrest his kid. He's like, he needs to be taught a lesson. You guys need to take him downtown. I had this conversation that, you know, I'm, there's no downtown. <laughs> they don't, they don't take him. They don't take kids for this. That's not going to solve your problem. Um, as well as I had already talked to his kid because the kid called police as well. 
with other family members that he was staying with. So there was a lot more of the story that I was already aware of that dad didn't know I was aware of. Um, he was just angry and trying to manipulate the situation and trying to order me around, which that does not go very well. Um, but the other one, I, I can get a little bit more into this story. <clears throat> so early in the week, I want to say it was on Monday, I was dispatched on a call about a 11, an 11 year old that ran away. Um, the, the mother said, yeah, last time that he ran away, he went to this location. So we went to that location first and we found the kid. Um, I mean, it's, it was raining that day. It's summertime, so it's not cold, but it was raining. He was wearing t-shirt and a pair of shorts and no shoes, no socks. And he was tiny. Uh, for an 11 year old, he was very tiny. He was probably 50 or 60 pounds. And uh, I, I find him, I would take him under a tree so we can talk, stay out of the rain. <clears throat> he's crying, he's shivering, saying he doesn't want to go back to his mom's because she's mean to him. And the, you know, that he didn't want to deal with the punishments and all this other stuff. I was like, well, fortunately you have to go back to your mom's. Let's go back and talk to her. Um, I get to mom's house. She greets me at the door and she's on the phone with somebody. She can't even get off her phone in order to have a conversation with me about her son. She's got her other kids around her and she's just screaming at me. You know, take this kid to children's services, take him to the hospital, take him anywhere, but you can't leave him here because I can't control him. I got four other kids that I got to take care of. You know, this, that, and the other thing. Uh, it turns out this kid definitely has some behavior issues, definitely has some mental health issues, um, has been in and out of foster care for an unknown period of time and I'm talking to the mom I'm like well where what am I supposed to do when I go to these places like I don't have a reason to take him to children's services just because you can't control him that does not give me the authority to remove him from your house and place him in children's services um, then she said well take him to children's behavioral health like well he's he's not exhibiting any of the signs that I need in order to pink slip a kid and force him into a mental health facility. It's like, if I take him there, all they're going to do is call you and tell you to come get him. And then she mentioned that she was already there with him like two days before. And I said, well, what did they tell you at the hospital when, when you came to pick him up? And she said, uh, well, they said to stop bringing him here because he's using this to get attention, which I was like, exactly. Um, why would I take him there right now? That's we're doing the exact opposite of what the hospital would say. She didn't have a good solution for me. And I told her, you know what? I'm going to go back to the car, talk to him some more, see if I can convince him to come in your house peacefully. And I go on out and I'm talking to this 11 year old boy. He's not, he's not willing to come in peacefully. He's, he said, I'm just going to run away. You know, all these other things. He did not want to come back in the house. I had a very long conversation. With him. And, uh, then I'm, I'm in a stalemate because I've got a mom that doesn't want the kid in the house. I've got a kid that's saying he doesn't want to come home. I started making calls. Uh, one of the calls that I made was to one of our, um, high ri our missing persons detectives that deal with juveniles. And I asked him, you know, what do you guys do in this case? And the long and short of it is there is no place to take a child simply because he doesn't want to be in his house and his parents don't want him. It is the parent's responsibility to watch this child. It's not the system's responsibility to watch this child. You know, we went through all of that stuff, said, you know, if if you take her, take this kid back home and he continues to run away with like this and she refuses to make adjustments to prevent him from running away in the future, she can be charged with child neglect. As like, okay, copy, I've got that. I'm gonna go have another talk with her. So I went up very calmly and very nicely I was very humble and I was telling her, listen, um, I don't have another option for this kid. It's like, the only option we have is that you are going to have to watch him. He is your responsibility and that's the way the courts look at it. That's the way the hospitals look at it. That's the way children's services look at it. Um, you need to watch him. And she, she starts going off about how she's on the phone with uh, children's services now, with his counselor, with this, that, and the other thing. And she's screaming at me, I can't control him. I'm doing everything I can. And finally, I was getting very frustrated at this point in time. I said, you're not doing everything that you can to learn how to deal with your son. You're doing everything you can to call other people and demand that they take care of your son. 
and that <laughs> that got her so pissed off. And and then uh, so she puts the phone down. She's staring at me. She's screaming at me and all this other stuff. I got her to calm down again, and I said, "Listen, um, I realize that you're calling counselors, you're calling all these other people, and you're trying to get them to change your son. But have you ever considered changing your tactics? Because one of the reasons that he ran away." So I, I, apparently this was an incident that he's a bedwetter. Um, he woke up with some wet underwear and he hid them in a closet because he didn't want his mom to find out because he was going to get punished. His mom ended up finding his dirty clothes and set off into punishing him. His first punishment was he had to go stand in the corner holding a bag of beans above his head and he had to hold them there for a long period of time. He said it was an hour. It might have been 15 minutes, a half hour. I don't really know. That initial punishment I don't have a problem with. But then she told him, you know, when your arms are too tired to do that, you're gonna run from the front door of the house to the back door of the house, and you're gonna keep doing that for the next three hours. That was his punishment for wetting the bed. Um, I believe that to be maybe a little bit excessive. Um, and I, I told her, I was like, you know, you have to be careful about the way you punish him because if your punishment is, is unending, and too severe, he's going to look for a way out. He's going to run. It was like, sometimes you have to use a stick. Sometimes you have to use a carrot. These are the exact words that I'm, I'm telling this mother. And I, I said, what you're doing right now is not working. Maybe it's time that you reconsider how you're acting in this situation, because maybe your actions have something to do with him running away. And you know, that turned into her more yelling and screaming at me, calling me a racist saying that the only reason I think I'm a good parent is because I'm white and and all this other stuff. Um, we ended up literally walking this kid up to the door and I, I gave her a, an ultimatum. You know, I said, you know, you are his parent. And it, Cause we got to the point where we were done talking. I wasn't gonna talk to the 11 year old anymore. I wasn't gonna talk to her anymore. We weren't getting anywhere. And I'd say, listen, you are his parent. He is your responsibility. It's your job to keep him in this house and keep him safe. If you are unable to do that or you refuse to do that, then you are subject to criminal child neglect charges. And you know, that led to more yelling and screaming, but I just turned and walked away, got in my car and left. I wasn't the only officer there. I wasn't the only one speaking. The other officers were saying very similar things to her, trying to get her to understand the situation and she just refused to. But what this really comes down to is a major problem with our society with no with everybody refusing to take to take care of their responsibilities and one of your responsibilities is actually for yourself as well um this idea that if you have a problem you can just call somebody else to solve your problem for you and that you don't have to put any effort in for yourself is what has gotten us into a lot of this trouble of a lot of people over the years have been working under the assumption that I don't need to fix my problems. I can just call the police and the police will fix my problems for me. I don't need to fix this problem with my child. I just need to call a counselor and a counselor will fix this problem with my child. You know, these are all things that are great resources that can help. But at the end of the day, the, the person that is required to do the majority of the work in this situation is the parent or is that person who has this problem that created this problem um it's it's very common it, it, it work it, it it's applicable to um these parenting situations it's applicable to a lot of these domestic disputes that we get into um it's applicable with neighbor disputes that we have to deal with you know i can't tell you how many times i've been dispatched on calls of uh freaking fence line disputes where that like house A has a fence and it's falling down. House B wants to install a new fence, but in order to install that new fence, fence A has to be taken down. And the person who owns fence A is unwilling to remove that fence, even though the neighbor is gonna put one up that's so much better and superior to the one that they have. Both parties just want me to come out and tell the other person that they're wrong. Um, and neither party is willing to accept any responsibility for their own um their own part of this problem i i don't know i i think that's just probably one of our our the biggest problems that i see with our society right now 
and it's it's top to bottom and I guess it, it kind of speaks to this idea that people say you know oh there's a problem and then the government says or people expect the government to fix that problem for them um, I think the gun violence is another one of those those things people expect the government to always have a solution to fix their problems and they're not willing to try to fix those problems themselves um, there is no government solution to these things you have to do something for yourself if you're unable to unable and unwilling to do something for yourself nothing will ever get better um, and that's how we kind of have gotten into this rut I see it every single day it's very frustrating um, it makes me feel like like I'm wasting my time as a matter of fact I know for a fact I'm wasting my time in a lot of these cases um, and it's very frustrating putting effort into these kind of things knowing that I I have the best advice to give people and that if they follow my my advice their life will be much better but they simply refuse to do so and not only do they refuse to put, follow my advice but they will get angry at me and they'll actually call and file complaints against me because they don't like my my fucking attitude or because they think that I'm a racist cop or something when really what that is is that they have a problem that they they created for themselves because they don't know how to act and they're just lashing out at everybody rather than trying to fix something within themselves I don't know that's been kind of my my theme this week at work it's been very frustrating thought I'd share with you guys thanks for watching I'll talk to you later